So hello and welcome to another edition of DAX Fridays. My name is Ruth Pasuelo from Curval.com and today we're going to talk about the mean, the median, the average and the mode. All of that in just a second. So hello and welcome back. We are going to continue our series of data profiling with Power BI and DAX. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the mean, the median, the average, and the mode. And all those four metrics tell us something about our data. They talk about measures of central tendency in statistics. What it means is basically tell us where the bulk of our data is. And the mode will say, what is the most recurrent number in our data set? Okay, the number that appears the most. So what is the difference between the mean and the median or the average and the median? First of all, the mean and the average is exactly the same thing and is calculated the same way. The number of data points they add and the sum of the data points divided by how many data points you have on the data set. You've done averages a thousand times, you know exactly how they are calculated, I'm sure of that. But there is a catch with averages. Uh, they are misleading depending on how your data looks like. And that's why data profiling is such a good thing to do. Should I use the average or should I use the mean? Now, what is the difference between both? That is a hard concept to understand. You know, I've gone through it on all my, you know, courses at school, at the university, You're like, oh my God, what is that? And it actually clicks for me when I heard, I read actually a story for introductory statistics, a fantastic website. So in that course, or in that story, it actually explains it in a way that I could remember and understand it and use it correctly. So I'm going to tell you that story and I hope that it resonates with you too, so you will understand also what it is and remember it. So here it is. Meet Susan. Susan is a business owner and uh, she wants to expand her business in other parts of the neighborhood or the city. So she knows exactly who her customers are. So she found the place and she wants to know if that place is a good place for her business. If the neighborhood is matches the target audience that or the target customer that she knows she has. So she sends her daughter Susan to a local bar where a lot of the locals are, uh, you know, spend their time in. And uh, Susan is not so thrilled about that because she has to ask how much do they make a year? but it's for her mom, so she does it anyway. She says, okay, mom, I'll do it. So she goes into the bar and bravely starts asking every customer in there what their names are and how much do they make. So they tell her, and after she has interviewed everybody in the bar, she sits down with a Coca-Cola and she starts calculating the average. So she has all the data points and then she calculates the average. Again, the sum of all data points divided by the number, how many. Suddenly, Bill Gates walks into the bar. And she's a bit annoyed because she just calculated everything. And she says, oh my God. But because she is for her mom, she asks Bill Gates, okay, what is your name and how much do you make? So she said, he says, my name is Bill Gates and I make $1 billion a year. So she adds Bill Gates to her data set. And then sits down again, calculates the average and goes home. And tells her mom, like, I'm ready mom, I know who our neighbors are, who the neighbors are in that uh, vicinity. I said, okay, so what are your findings? And it says, everybody there is a millionaire. And her mom is like, what? I mean, she doesn't know exactly everything about that uh, neighborhood, but she definitely knows that that's not a place where millionaires live. So she knows that something is really, really wrong. So she asked her daughter to show her 
the data. It's like, okay, let's go look at the data to see how everybody can be a millionaire. Like maybe there was a millionaire's club meeting just when my daughter was there, who knows? So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to jump into Power BI, we're going to look at the data set and we're going to calculate the average and see why everybody was a millionaire. Okay, so let's do this. Let's check Susan's data, what she collected. So I have sample one and sample two. Sample one is the first uh, data points that she collected and sample two is data points including Bill Gates, okay? So we go to sample one and we put the names and the income and uh, we are going to calculate the average. New measure. Average is the average. You can use it as a measure or, you know, average check. So you can go row by row and then we get the income. Average there. So uh, there you go. So here we have 50,000. So before Bill Gates entered the bar, the average income for the bar was $50,000. Okay. And the data set with Bill Gates in the bar is here. Here we have our dear Bill Gates. So let's check that out. We put name and income. This is data set two. And now we're going to calculate the average. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Average. Average. And then sample two. Oh, sure. Uh, with Bill Gates. Put it there, make a card. We make it in dollars. Same with that one. So data labels, non. So here we have the data that Susan gave her mom. So the average person in the bar after Bill Gates walked into it is 80 million. So from 50,000 to 8 million, just because one person walked into the bar that have an obscene amount of money. <laughs> okay. So this is what you need to take into account when you calculate averages. So you can see now that when you have outliers, in your data set, averages are not a good measure of central tendency, you know, of the, the middle point in your data set. An outlier is called in the statistics a point, data point that is far, far off from the rest of the population. How far off? It depends on how your data looks like. But you will know, you will see, you will see it when you plot it. You, you can actually spot outliers and there are ways to measure them. Um, so you might think, okay, let's remove the outlier. Well, you shouldn't. It's sometimes in this case, because Bill Gates does not live in that neighborhood, you can actually remove him and you're fine. Then you can continue using average. But let's say that we're measuring site speed, website site speed, um, and uh, you start getting values. You know, normally if you're in Europe and the US, probably a website loads between 30 seconds and, I don't know, a, a minute or two. But you might get the, the points of five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And you might say, oh, I should remove those, right? Well, it depends. If your business is global and you actually segment your data to see where those points lie, maybe it could be in regions or countries where they don't have a good connectivity. And you want to know that because maybe you want to do a mobile website or a website that loads faster, that has less fancy things just for those 
target countries if they are interesting for you. So you should not remove them, you should understand them. And once you know what they are and why they are there, then, then is when you can make a decision, can I remove them or should I keep them? Okay? So it, it's not always a good practice to just remove the outliers. But that's why we have the median. So the median measures the center of your data set without being so much influenced by the outliers. Okay? And we are going now to calculate the median in Power BI and I'll show you and you will see the difference. And that's why when you are profiling a data set, you should definitely have the average and the median. Always calculate always the median because it will give you an idea if they are too far apart, your data is funky. You have some things there that you need to take care of. Okay? So let's go to that and then we'll calculate the mode. Now let's look at how the data or what the central tendency measures So now let's see how it looks if we calculate the median instead of the average. So we go to sample one, median, median sample one, put it in there and then none and we're going to make it dollars also. Uh, 45,000 per year is the median. So as you can see, the average and the median is giving us more or less the same information, okay? Which is correct when there is no outliers on the data set. Now let's calculate the median when Bill Gates is in the bar. We go here, median with Bill Gates. And then we use sample two, we should format it correctly and 47,000. So as you can see now the median is not influenced by the outlier that much by Bill Gates, you can see. So if somebody presents you data you don't have this data point. The only thing they give you is, okay, we have sample one, sample one, and then they give you, oh, this is so annoying. You see, you can't grab them. Oof. And then this is sample two. So if somebody gives you this information, you have two data sets. For the first one, the average is 50,000 and the median 45,000. For the second one, the average is 83,000 and the median is 47,000. You have an idea in your head as to how these data points, how this data set looks like. Okay, without actually seeing any data. In this, it's very, very clear that you have outliers. There's something is skewing your data somewhere. Okay, so what is the mode then? The mode is 41,000. Let's format it correctly. Boom, bo 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 bo. There you go, 41,000. So now you have the average, the mean, and the mode. And you can see here that this is quite centered um, uh, data set. So let's talk about mode now. Mode is also a measure of central tendency. There is no function or DAX function for it. Um, and I've actually, let me show you. I am going to show you the mode calculation that the SQL BI guys is showing here. I mean, it works beautifully. Uh, they mentioned that you cannot implement it as a measure in DAX. And the reason for that is because when a data set has two modes, you cannot 
return a table in a measure, right? You have to have a table. So I'm going to show you an alternative of how to do it using their exact same uh, formula. But let's go to Power BI and let me explain how that measure works. So here we have it, the mode. And let's break this into pieces. It's the easiest way to understand it. So again, here with DAX measures, you start from, from the middle and then you expand out. So new table, you can do this in DAX Studio. I like to do it in Power BI. So let's see what that table does. So we have add columns, values. This gives us the values, the distinct values for income. So it will give you a list of all the distinct values on the income column. And then we're just calculating the frequency. So how often does a value show up? In this case, 45,000 45, shows up two times. And 41,000 shows two times, shows up two times. So now we have a table with the incomes and how often they show up. The next thing they've done is calculating the top one value. So what is the income with the highest frequency? In this case, we have two, right? So look what happened. Let's do it in a new table. Shift enter. Then I copy. Uh, let me do it again. Mode. So there we have it. Um, it is giving us the top one, which is in this case is two values. Um, top n cannot break ties, so it will give you both. Uh, and it says the income for the 1,000 and 45,000 has frequented C2, which is the top n, which is what we expected to get as a result. So the next thing they do is they add the mean, mean x to be able to return just one value and have it as a measure. Um, but I think that this table here should be used as a mode because it would give you both values. And then you can show that there are actually two modes instead of one. So you don't actually need to do the mean X. It's a preference, but you can do, uh, you can choose how to do it depending on what your needs are basically. But the mean X again will give you the lowest value of these two. So it should be 41,000. If we put the mode in there, you get the 41,000, okay, as one of the modes. This is the mean mode, perhaps we should call it, or the minimum value of the mode. Uh, you could have mean mode and max mode. Um, that, there are different ways to, to solve this if it's needed to report all values. So now we have understood, hopefully, the difference between the mean and the average is the same, but the mean and the median, and we know how to kind of calculate the mode. So <laughs> what do you think? I hope this was useful and clear, but let me know in the comment box if there's something that it was weirdly explained. Um, next video, it will be the standard deviation. And after that, I will do an evaluation and see if we should continue with the series or not. But uh, have a great Friday and I'll see you again on Monday. Take care. Bye.